Marcelo Bielsa, thank you very much for your help. Well, I wish that were true. I mean, the phone call at least. I can credit him for turning Kingstonian season around. My name is Dalgit. Welcome to Bustanet. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification button to stay in touch for more videos like this. If you've been following the episodes lately, you would have noticed that we got off to a wrong, the wrong start in the league uh, and I've been struggling and I've been looking for inspiration. And that inspiration came actually from the Twitch streams where you guys popped into the stream and started asking me questions about Bielsa. And I was toying with the idea of how I could apply that into a show. Now, I've got a highlights uh, package as well as a short little guide on how I would apply Bielsa's principles into the game that should be out or it should be coming out very, very soon. And meanwhile, here with Kingstonian, the challenge was applying those principles. Now, the first thing we to understand about Bielsa is um, his principles are actually an extension of Arigo Sachi's, right? The press that, uh, intense pressing that Arigo Sachi's side used, the uh, compactness when they attacked, Bielsa just extended that. Uh, he revealed as much in an interview in Mexico in 2000 and I think 2009, 2010. The thing here is that what I'm trying to achieve is I'm going to take the same principles that Bielsa holds dear and I'm going to try and apply it to football manager. Now, we all know that Bielsa's tactics go from a 4-1-4-1 in defense into a 3-3-1-3. Um, he's done it with Leeds. He did it with Chile when they were playing the World Cup 2010, which was probably, for me, the defining moment for the, 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 uh, the system. Because uh, with Chile, they didn't have David Pizarro in the side. So they had to resort to creating a system that allowed them to control midfield. In the absence of a really solid holding midfielder, they turned to converted midfielders who started out from wider positions as fullbacks sometimes and they would drift into the middle to control space. Now, naturally, this, this didn't happen all the time and you would also see them bombing down the flanks, giving the side a lot of width. The style of football that they used was pretty intense. Uh, they they played with a suicidally high defensive line, an aggressive press, man-orientated marking. It was basically a pretty aggressive system that transitioned really quickly from back to front. So, how do we take those principles and apply them to football manager? Basically, this is going to be just my interpretation of the system. Naturally, there will be a lot of interpretations of a popular system like the 3313 that Bielsa uses. The goal here for me is not to say that. Naturally, there's, there are going to be lots of interpretations for this. Naturally, there are going to be a lot of interpretations for the system. This is merely mine and I in no way claim that this is an accurate application because all I'm trying to do is apply the principles. So that is more important to me. I want to get the flow. I want to get the intensity. I also want to get the suicidal press going as well. Now, the, the key thing here is that that was the weakness of the system. When Chile played Brazil in the knockout rounds, they were knocked out <laughs> because as they went for that suicidal pressing style that they had, Brazil just played counter-attacks behind that line and they went on to win the game. So this is something that I want to maintain in the system because I, while it's nice to have that um, ruggedness in the system, that, that, that feeling that your players might get too tired by, by halftime or they might even see themselves get sent off because these were all the vulnerabilities in Marcelo Bielsa's system. It's still the same vulnerabilities at Leeds. So... I tried to apply those principles into the game using a 4-1-4-1 that had a halfback dropping uh, between the two central defenders causing a split, giving us the three, the two inverted wingbacks pushing up into midfield, giving me the three in midfield then with the uh, with a central midfielder. I'm going to just use a roll here like a Carrillo that gave me that three in midfield. So the two inverted wingbacks with a Carrillo for my three. And then I needed to get my one to form the tree in attack, the one player that will be moving around, creating all the chances, that ended up being my central midfield on attack. And then up top, we have our three attackers. 
Um, the important thing to bear in mind is the system actually has a uh, kind of a roaming striker that uh, moves around, creating space for others to you know to attack. Now, there are many interpretations of the system. You could I even tried one that was that looked very much like this, but the problem with this interpretation, which probably might might appeal to a lot more people, is the fact that it's so deep that you don't get that aggression in the press. Now, I didn't really like it, so I left it. Plus, on top of that, some people might want to go with, yes, you know, Bielsa used, used the playmaker when he was at Chile in this position. Therefore, you want to use one. This is why I don't claim that this is an accurate replication. I'm only going for the principles. And how do I apply them? Well, before I get to that, let's go look at some of our results that we've had since I switched to the system. After the defeat to Portsmouth, we managed to get two home draws. I went into this Blackburn game using uh, one of the earlier versions of my Bielsa system. It did okay. We managed to get a draw against Tabletoppers Blackburn, which was a really good result. However, I still wasn't impressed because if I looked at the action zones and how I was performing in that game, midfield, yeah, we did decently in midfield. We managed to get some possession in their opponent's half, but, you know, I spent a lot of time trying to get out of trouble. So I went like, okay, while the system might work, maybe I need better players to pull this one off. And wasn't enough for me. So we swat, we switched to this version for my next game, which was my version 2 of the tactic. Now, this match was a lot better because we were compact in defense, we were compact in attack, we transitioned really quickly from back to front. This is us playing from right to left. As you can see, we formed the 4-1-4-1 when we have to defend the ball. My players are aggressively pressing uh, the opponent when they have the ball. And notice how close we're marking the opposition. Right. So when we get the ball, uh, the, the boys drop into a nice position when we have to defend, closing down very aggressively. And applying a lot of pressure on the ball carrier. Now, this is a, the, one of the key facets of the way we are playing at the moment. And then when we work the ball out, we look for opportunities to launch quick counter-attacks. Now, this didn't pan out. Again, we end we ended up going for the pressure one more time. The boys are applying the pressure and then the pressure breaks down. This is my CMA. He's gone off and uh, we've got our inside forward dropping in across for our fullback to go in and score. That was our first goal. This is what we look like when we're in transition. We've got a three, all three, sometimes a four, sometimes a one and a three in attack. And then there's, what I'm trying to get is plenty of movement between the lines so that we... The whole idea here is they don't really play a pass and sit approach. It's a pass and move approach I'm trying to adopt within the game. So here the, here the opposition have the ball. We're in a 4-1-4-1. Four, one, four, one. Once it breaks down, my system will slowly morph into a three at the back. And it goes into three in midfield. And then we get off four or three. But we are playing extremely narrow at the moment. If an opportunity presents itself, the inverted wing back overlaps. The inverted wing back from here also overlaps. Then they hold their position. Otherwise, they go right through the middle looking for opportunities to score. I don't expect this to be a perfect replication. I just want to apply some of the principles. I was really happy with our result against Sunderland. We won this game 3-0 with uh, three open play goals. And then we also defeated uh, Newcastle with an open play goal. And this was the highlight for me because of the pressing that we were doing. We were doing some aggressive defending and aggressive pressing. And that brings me to the tactic itself. I'll go into a lot more detail uh, on a later video on the tactic itself. But for now, the, as far as the system is concerned, this is what I try and achieve. First up, we want the aggressive press. High line, high line of engagement, we'll get stuck in. You got it. We're going hard on players. The second thing we want to achieve is Bielsa's system runs between the lines. So we're going to have right defense. The third thing we're going to be doing is his system usually attacks very narrow, but the wing backs, the wing backs sometimes go down the flanks. We can achieve that with the inverted wing back and the overlap shout. Plus, we're using inverted wing back rolls. Shouldn't be a problem. And then finally, and this is the clincher, we're using a split block plus man orientated marking. Yes, for the first time in the last six years, I've gone man oriented marking. And that is. Because I want to take Bielsa's principles 
and apply it to the core, right? So I'm taking the man oriented marking that systems use and I'm going to use it in my tactic. The only, maybe the slight difference is how do I, how do we use it? We want to prevent, uh, we want to continually put a, apply pressure on the opposition. We continually want to, you know, force them into mistakes. So, Close down more, the split block is applied to all these players. There's no split, there's a split block here. There's no split block here. So we only do the split block with four players. We also apply man oriented marking on with these four players. So these four players will be targeted to mark specific players. He's gonna be always marking a defender. This guy is always gonna be looking out for the defensive midfielder and he's gonna go for him if there is a defensive midfielder on the pitch. And then we've got these two players who've been tasked to mark fullbacks and wingbacks in games. All right, so that's basically it. Okay, um, now we've got this huge match against Hull coming up. I'm going to my training. And we're also going to be very simple in our training. We want to maximize everything. So what I've done is, I think on my early season training, I modified it slightly because we're going to, we're going to have to work very hard making sure that our boys are getting ready for every match. The results are really important. We've been on a bad run. We want to get out of it. We've already gotten ourselves our first win of the season at home against Sunderland. We travel away to Hull next and we want to make sure that we continue this fine run. I'm under no illusion. This is still a very difficult game. I don't think that... First up, I don't think we should be playing the high line because Nugent, my, my defender, is not exactly the fastest you know guy on the block. He's like 9. So the voice in my head keeps telling me, are you completely insane? <laughs> I've been known to be quite insane. So we're going to switch to Lee and bring Lee on because in this match, perhaps away from home, I don't want to use Nugent even though he is definitely um, the player that I should be using because he's, he's probably the one of the best defenders, but he'll be on the bench. Uh, then we've got the rest of the players, we got Hall. I'm going to put Hall on uh, as another option. Um, then up top, we're going to stick to Olumola. Shaburni wants to play a lot more. This is the, now the, it's becoming a slight issue for me because I don't want to keep using Shaburni. All right, so here we go. Um, yep, we've done everything. Now we have to go into the game and identify the players I want to man mark. So we'll submit the team. Oh, okay, they're playing a 4-4-2. This makes things a bit interesting. <laughs> I Okay, this is a bit harder now because I don't think we can handle a 4-4-2 at this point in time. Uh, so we got to make sure this guy is marking the right player. Okay, he's marking the left back, so the other guy should be marking the right one. Uh, we're going to talk to him and tell him to mark the MCL because he's the deeper one. So I most most likely that guy is actually the playmaker. We'll have to keep changing this in the game as well. We have to pay attention to this in the match so that um, if we need to, we can change them. All right, so we've done everything we needed to do. Um, and uh, go to team talk. We are, and we'll kick off. And we'll encourage the team straight out of the gate. Adams out to Chap Chat to Gibbons to Kirby. Kirby brings the ball forward and Gibbons is there to support him. Gibbons runs through the tries to run through the lines. Honeyman is there. And the boys are coming back quickly to defend. That was a that was a chat hard tackle on Okoro straight away. Adams out to Parker. Phillips takes a shot as the wing back was uh, the inverted wing back was going for the overlap. Five minutes on the clock. Oh, we're defending a corner. Honeyman defended well. No, not well enough. Sweeney scores. It's been a disallowed. Yes, thank you very much. I'm not paying attention to all these things at the moment. Kingstone, look at the possession numbers. Doing well with possession. Playing aggressively. And action zones are... But they are spending quite a lot of time in our half. <laughs> you can tell that. 10%. 9%. We're dropping the numbers, but they're still doing quite well. Okay, I'm going to try and hit them between the lines. Uh, we pass into space. they got wing backs on attack now. Jack Lee and Moore Adams have picked up yellow cards, and I can't afford to start taking, you know, bringing 
yellow cards uh, or asking them to take it easy. This is a style of play we play and it's dangerous as hell because the moment they get a yellow card, there's a thing in the game that tells the player to be a bit more safe, right? I'm only worried that um, it's a transition event and they'll have to go in for the tackle. Parker does well. Oh, they're putting pressure. Oh, Melish rocks the post again. Yes, Melish has rocked the post a few times. The inverted wing back took a sm shot, smashed the upright. <laughs> Lee to Kirby. Kirby beats one player, beats the line, gives it to Phillips. Phillips finds Shaburni. Shaburni now finds Phillips. It's Olomo, Gibbons, Shaburni again, Olomo, Adams, Gibbons now. Adams, they, re they resettle again into the system. Melish out wide, but no. Okay, they've done well. But I'm not going to say they've done well. <laughs> okay, it doesn't seem to work in this game. Okay, Srini. Out to Williams. Williams back to Sweeney. Okay, good work from Phillips. Phillips goes long to Shaburni. Shaburni finds Phillips. Phillips tries the return pass to Shaburni, but Shaburni was just that fraction too slow. But imagine if Shaburni was faster. I think that's how you pronounce his name, Shaburni, I guess. Possession numbers. We reduce the attacking uh, possession in our third now. Still doing quite well. Okay. Kingstonian. Okay, now the question is, who do I take off? Okay, we've got a corner to defend. Ah, yeah, yeah. You know you're doing well when the, you can see the goal and it's from a corner now in FM20. Alright, Tim Parker. We're going to demand more. That's the first thing I want to do. Hoping that that lifts the 6.2 because I don't really want to take him off. Corner again. And it goes all the way to Sweeney. He's already closed on. Yes! That's what we do, boys. That's what we do. Keep it up. Olomo into the box. It's... It's Park. It's coming! Shit. It's bloody hell. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. And I'm shouting Kirby's name. Olomola. Into the box. They barely clear the danger. Parker... Hits and Kirby scores defensively again. Shaburni is at 6.3. We're gonna take Shaburni off. He's not having a good game. I'm gonna bring Politic on. Although Mola is having a good game, even though the game says he can't play as a complete forward. Do I care? <laughs> All right. Um, wow. Okay, what do we do next? I'm toying with the idea of taking off uh, Jack Lee for more um, Ben Nugent. We got a corner to defend. I'm going to do that. Jack Lee is at 6.7. We're going to bring on Ben Nugent. Substitutions on the corner. Cooper shoots. Johnson makes the save. All right. We're going to have to check, right? This is the problem with these kind of man marking systems. Have they made a substitution? Yes, they have. They've substituted George Cooper, who is doesn't matter to me. They've substituted Connor Chaplin. Uh, the two strikers have been taken off. The fullbacks are still there, so that's uh, our man marking on them. And then on Josh De Silva, who we now are going to tackle hard. Oh, hang on a minute. I don't want to get overboard. I don't want to go overboard with this because if I do, I might find myself a man down. John Mellish, 7.0, Sweeney. Now the question is whether my players can last the full distance. Or oh, Lewis Potter, corner kick. We have to defend. Come on, boys. Concentrate. Concentrate. Where's the shot? Okay, there you go. It's defended well again. If he, It's going to be Johnson. It's Nugent. It's Adams. Kirby. Out to Mellish. Mellish now. Looks for Olomola. Olomola plays it back to Phillips. Kirby again. Olomola inside the box. <laughs> what is going on? Adams. It's Phillips. It's Kirby. Kirby fights Parker. It's Politic. His name is Politic. Yeah, man. His name is really Danny, Dennis Politic. Okay. I don't know what else to do. I keep pressing the pause button in that hope that we can... I can't handle this tension. 
It's three yellow cards now. It's four yellow cards now. Whew. Okay. All right. Team instructions. Okay. Now it's a question of do I ease off the tackles or do I keep this going? We're gonna keep it going. Now we gotta tell the boys. To, I can't say calm down. That would have been a nice shot to, to see for the you know the dying seconds. Eighty six minutes. They fired up. It's a great ball to Chaplin. Scores. Oh. That's a late, late equalizer. That's the problem with my defensive line, right? It's because I'm playing so high up the pitch. So high up the pitch that I'm always going to be vulnerable to this. This is a one weakness in the system. Yes, I should have dropped the defensive line. I know, I know. But I want to stay true. <laughs> I want to stay true to Bielsa. <laughs> I could definitely drop the defensive line, but then I won't be true to Bielsa. Okay. They go into a 4 2 4. They're shocked. They can't believe the fact that Kingstonian are holding them to a draw at home. Politic looks up. It's Olomola. Olomola is away. Olomola scores! <laughs> Incredibly politic off the Olomola. The defend they were up there. They put everybody up for the corner. And we have somehow managed to sneak it right at the whistle. We have FM FM. Time wasting. Let's go for this, man. No more pass into space. We've done it. Boys, we just have to hang on. We just have to hang on. Yes. It's Melish. It's Olomola. 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 Politic. Adams. Kirby. Olomola. Olomola. Yes. What a performance! Defensively rugged. We had two clear cut chances. It's been a great, great day. Again, I that was really special as nobody gave us a chance, but you played passionately. I'm gonna to talk to them. It's two wins now. We have done it. What a day this was going to be. I mean, look at this man. Olufela Olomola. <laughs> He's a new signing. And the thing is that we are using... This is where people are going to just gonna scratch their heads and either say this is a, it's a stupid match engine. <laughs> but look at this. He's got acceleration. Okay. And he's got... He can last the 90. He's got determination. He's got work rate. <laughs> he at least can hold on. Triple with the ball, 11. He's got a very good first touch. So all he's got to do is bring the ball under control and he's away. And that's all I need from him. Right? He knocks the ball past the opponent and that's enough. Once he knocks the ball past the opponent, he, he can get away. The only question is whether he can score because he's finishing and it's well, 9 and 10, still okay. But man, did Olomola surprise me. We are completely spent. So this is a, this is going to be my Bielsa system for the season. Now, this is it. You see, this is going to be the problem with playing this kind of a system. Because I'm going to be drawing so many yellow cards in a season, I have to identify my spine. Or there might even be games where I have to drop Remove tackle harder. Because tackling harder is drawing, giving me, getting me into a lot of trouble. And I don't, I'm not even sure if I have the depth in the squad to, you know, get a, to f the depth in the squad to fill the void. Already messages are coming from Marcelo Bielsa. He's apparently very happy with this result that we've just drawn. Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm actually thrilled, man. I mean, I was so dejected at the start of the season. I was, seriously. I thought I was going to go down. But look at the performance from the boys against Hull. I never expected this. I was going, yeah, you know, and especially against the 4 4 I was, I'm more worried about the 4 4 than most other systems because the 4 4 4 4 can be deceptively strong. But this was a brutal match. And Olomola picks up his, I think, his second man of the... Yeah, 
Second man of the match. Second man of the match for Olo Mola. Wow. Will my little spin on Marcelo Bielsa's system be able to work wonders with Kingstonian? A team I thought were going to be in such deep trouble at the start of the season. I don't know, man. I'm interested to hear your opinions about the system I'm using. Um, join me on Twitch as well because we'll be discussing it on Twitch. And uh, if you have your own little versions of that system, join me on Twitch again. <laughs> Share it with me and then we'll try them out too. So you guys, I am looking forward to hearing from all of you. Drop me a note on addicted2fm.com if you want to ask me a question. You can find me on Twitter at Bustanet. And of course, Twitch. You guys have a great one. Once again, thanks for all the support. I'll catch you very, very soon. Bye-bye.